All right, everybody. It says we're live, so if I am, in fact, live, please let me know in the chat. Good to see everybody tonight back here on a Monday, which means we're going to discuss things that have happened this week that are happening right now, things we need to prepare for, things we need to be aware of, and just, in general, current issues that are going on globally that could lead us towards some very negative scenarios. So, good to see everybody. We got Grissio Nemo saying 556 by 45 that's how you know we are good to go. I've got Sherman Sales saying the same thing. Tubby G is here. Good to see you. we got Christian Clark as well. Harbor Prepper, good to see you too. Dave Sickles, good evening, Magic Prepper. It's a good time to stack mags with like-minded folk. And I agree with that. So, <laughs> all right. And just so everybody knows, I got a brand new microphone tonight. So hopefully we have some good audio. Just doing my best to try to improve things here and make this whole shindig a little bit more enjoyable even though we talk about some serious things we should still have a good time with it because this is part of building a community right now it's good to see everybody i appreciate all of you here in the chat i'm seeing some hearts come through i didn't even know that was something that could happen so hey that's cool um anyway we're gonna get started on talking about all these three hot zones we're watching right this second and any one of them has the at least in my opinion probably the highest potential to create a world war three type scenario at this point in time um and of course we're going to talk about those leaks that came out of the pentagon and how they kind of apply to some of these scenarios that are going on and i wanted to give you some different perspectives as to how you might want to approach some of that information and things you might want to keep in mind when you're digesting that info because there's a lot of things happening right now and in the fog of war misinformation and things of that nature are rampant so let's get going good to see you all loretta hutch is here we got ghost lincoln paul nelson hi from montana well hello from north dakota neighbor good to see you all right yeah ken woods we're surviving the shindig exactly <laughs> uh seiko mag accidental leaks well let's talk about that i think that's probably the first thing we can get into tonight and probably the most reasonable thing uh for us to kind of discuss when it comes to the validity of all of this right so the first hot zone we're going to talk about tonight and if you're here on the replay thank you so much for being here i really appreciate the support uh thanks for taking the time to come back and listen to what we discussed here and make sure you check us out on mondays usually at 8 30 central standard time much appreciated what are we talking about when it comes to these leaked documents and what hot zone are we starting off with well the most obvious hot zone going on in the world right now is clearly over in ukraine and we know that the russian ukraine conflict is a hotbed of possibilities a lot of things could happen there but we also had this leaked document situation occurring now the first thing i want everyone to keep in mind when we're talking about this information is where it comes from and some of the sources involved now the information itself was spread through different social media channels including some of the uh you know 4chan style pages and there were some discord servers and everything else involved with this information being put out there however the news organization that broke the story about the leaked documents and brought everyone's attention to it is the new york times so when i see that and when i think about who's putting this information out there it definitely gives me reason to pause and i guess analyze anything put out by this entity with a filter of let's just say bias right because we know that the new york times has increasingly degenerated into a political machine more so than a reliable news source um, a lot of mainstream media has done the same of course but the new york times has had a lot of egregious errors over the years and for them to just suddenly be super involved with real investigative journalism and to release this information for the public and to let everyone know about what's happening there should make you question what the purpose of all of this is right and as people who want to be as prepared as possible we have to approach the information we're being given with a level of skepticism due to the fact that we're in the fog of war so there's information warfare occurring right now which means any information that's put out there can be used to someone's advantage regardless of whether or not it's from one side or the other it's likely that this information is being put out there for a reason not just for you to be as aware or as informed as possible because i don't think we really assume that's everyone's intention here when it comes to how things are treated at this point in time here in the united states as well as in the rest of the western hemisphere okay but to get started the first hot zone we're talking about tonight ukraine russia here is what we're hearing from these 
leaked documents and here's some of the information that i just wanted you to you know take with you when it comes to this particular discussion okay secret documents that appear to detail american national security secrets on ukraine the middle east and china have surfaced online and that might be a little bit of a preview as to the three hot zones that we're going to be discussing tonight but it's true those three places are relatively volatile at this point in time okay Washington. A new batch of classified documents that appear to detail American national security secrets from Ukraine to the Middle East to China surfaced on social media sites on Friday, alarming the Pentagon and adding turmoil to a situation that seemed to have caught the Biden administration off guard. Seemed to have possibly not have but here we go the scale of the leak analysts say more than 100 documents may have been obtained along with the sensitivity of the documents themselves could be hugely damaging u.s officials said a senior intelligence official called the leak a nightmare for the five eyes in a reference to the united states britain australia new zealand and canada the so-called five eyes nations that broadly share intelligence the latest documents were found on twitter and other sites on friday a day after senior biden administration officials said they were investigating a potential leak of classified ukrainian war plans including an alarming assessment of ukraine's faltering air defense capabilities one slide dated february 23rd is labeled secret no foreign meaning it was not meant to be shared with foreign countries which according to this article and according to some information that i was able to access would generally lead you to believe that it came from an internal source somebody who is able to acquire this within the pentagon or within a certain security clearance rather than being from a foreign entity aka you know russian hackers or something along those lines right okay so here's the thing more information has come out since this article, but this was kind of the initial mainstream media push surrounding these leaked documents. And what I want everyone to keep in mind is that this is coming from the New York Times. They generally have a political bias and agenda when it comes to a lot of the information that they put out, which is unfortunate because at one point in time they were a relatively reliable news source, which I don't necessarily believe is the case any longer. And the other thing we have to keep in mind is that there's a lot of reasons why this information that's being leaked might be be useful to those who want to continually push more involvement with this conflict okay and one of the dead giveaways here that we'll discuss here more so is this whole concept surrounding the faltering air defense capabilities okay now this goes into some other things that are going on talks about how you know this was found on telegram and twitter and 4chan and all these other social media platforms but in reality the main focus here should be how close we are to this war escalating towards something even more egregious than what we're currently witnessing and the fact that nato is even more likely to be involved now than what we knew before and a lot of these plans that were leaked which in case you haven't seen you can actually find a lot of this information online you can find a lot of this information uh yourself but i'm not, not necessarily going to share these leaked documents within this live stream because i don't know if that would be inappropriate or possibly cause me issues here but we are going to discuss the content of those documents because at this point in time they are public but what i want to mention is that this whole concept surrounding their air defense capabilities faltering is a really good reason for why they need more air defense right and so you can see how this can be used now towards more efforts when it comes to nato resupplying or possibly reinforcing some of those defensive capabilities which then escalates the conflict further and further towards that world war three scenario that we're concerned about so this is kind of the first push into the leaked documents thing. You see there's a lot more information here, but in reality, there's just a lot of argument that happens within this article talking about how Ukrainians don't really care about it. They're saying, look, we're on the front lines. It doesn't really matter to us. This is misinformation. The fog of war is here. You can't really tell what's true or what's not. And I would have to agree with that. Okay, so just to kind of give you a quote here. In Ukraine, Lieutenant Colonel Yuri Baritsa, a battalion commander with Ukraine's National Guard whose forces have fought in the country's east in recent months, shrugged off news of the leak. He noted that information warfare had become so intense that we can no longer determine where is the truth and where is the lie. And I think that we should all adopt that exact mantra. You should all already be under operating under that kind of clause basically, right? Like we already should be aware of the fact that any information we're given is part of an information warfare campaign regardless of origin because it's useful in some way shape or form regardless of how the average american citizen feels about it it's going to be used to leverage something by some entity doesn't matter if it's the united states if it's russia if it's ukraine or even if it's some other country right so moving on from there because we're going to talk about this whole you know well we also have to worry about this whole air defense situation right so the leaked Pentagon documents paint a grim picture of Ukrainian air defense supplies 
they may only last a month, right? So not only are we getting this information, and, and it, look, I have no proof that none of this is valid. I have no proof that it has been maliciously edited or anything like that, which is some of the concerns that are out there, right? People are concerned saying, well, you know, uh, this information could have been, you know, obtained and then edited via Photoshop or something like that through, you know, Russian disinformation campaigns that are now trying to push a narrative or push a, uh, you know, a date or whatever when it comes to how fast or how quickly this, uh, this conflict is going to unfold into something else. But regardless, we're going off of the information we currently have. And I just wanted to mention that this is just what we're being told. So understand what can be, I guess, brought into fruition by this information, okay? Leaked Pentagon documents paint grim picture of Ukrainian air defense supplies may only last a month. I said that already once, but I wanted to say it one more time. Ukraine may run out of air defenses by May 23rd, opening the door for Russia. So now you can see that there is a little bit more uh, motivation, possibly, or maybe a little bit more urgency to get more directly involved, right? I mean, they're about to lose their air defenses by May 23rd. We have a cutoff date now, which might be true, but also could be conveniently placed in order to reassure that there's going to be more involvement in the sense of NATO and the West and resupply and munitions and training and equipment and everything else, or possibly direct involvement. The leaked U.S. Pentagon documents paint a grim picture of Ukraine's air defense outlook, predicting the country could run out of key assets before the end of May. Ukraine's S-300 air defense systems could run out of ammunition by as early as May 2nd, while the country's other air defenses could be depleted by May 23rd, the documents warn. The documents, dated a late February, state that systems like the S-300 make up some of or make up some 89% of Ukraine's air defense capability. And what a lot of people might not realize is that the S-300 air defense system is likely the most capable air defense system that's out there. And it's one of the main reasons why Ukraine is able to fend off some of these Russian air strikes that have been happening. However, if they are actually losing their ability to continually operate those S-300 systems, well, then they are definitely going to open the door to more Russian aggression from the sky. It's just how it would work because the S-300s are very um, efficient in many ways. But should Ukraine lose its ability to threaten Russian aircraft encroaching on its territory, the conflict could quickly turn. Currently, Russia maintains a fleet of some 485 fighter jets compared to Ukraine's 85. Should air defense systems go offline, Ukraine's lopsided numbers game in the air would be its only means of securing the sky over Ukrainian troops. Okay, so you can see how there's a few ways this can go. Either this is very bad for Ukraine, right? And Russia's suddenly going to have extreme air superiority in the sense of not having to worry about any defensive measures that are currently in position um and at the same time this could also be looked at in the sense of all right well what do we need to do right like what does the west need to do what does nato need to do we got to get in there we got to do more because they're about to lose otherwise right so you can see how this information from these leaked documents um not only can escalate the situation into a very dangerous territory, but can also be used from both sides of the equation. And one thing I do want to mention is that even though these documents were leaked, and even though there's a lot of interesting information there and maps and data and graphs and everything else, it would also be somewhat naive to assume that a lot of this information was secretly hidden away from those who would benefit from its existence, right? Um, underestimating Russia's capabilities of espionage and everything else um, would probably be a dangerous strategy to have, right? So a lot of this information might already be known by them. So then you also have to question, why is it being leaked or why are we being made aware of it, right? Why would it benefit someone if the public had this awareness versus the foreign adversary that everyone's concerned about having this information and then possibly leaking it themselves even in order to change the narrative or change you know the numbers right so there's been a lot of uh of questions surrounding that but i just wanted you to kind of consider that when we're talking about this stuff that's happening because it could be used in so many different ways that it's very hard to really ascertain exactly what its purpose is okay the Pentagon said on Sunday that an interagency task force is assessing the validity and impacts of the sensitive and highly classified material that has leaked online, right? I guess, right? So, and, he, and them trying to say that is just buying time. That was just my opinion, at least, right? It's very easy to just push things off as disinformation or possibly not even being valid or whatever it is, right? Um, so it's easier to do that because it buys you more time or at some point you at least have said that it's possible it's not real, which means that from there on, there's really no exact way to prove that it is real. So there's a lot of things that you should 
consider when it comes to why the government would also be possibly denying its validity, all right? We also had that whole British spy plane situation come into play when uh, these leaked documents came out saying, oh, a Russian jet almost shot down a British spy plane, right? I mean, I guess. Uh, that's like a... If, almost oh well right if it didn't happen it didn't happen um so putting it in there could just be more reasons for why nato needs to get involved like i don't know you know like but we're we're what we're witnessing here is that that information warfare that fifth generation warfare we've talked about before right and a a, a perfect piece of of let's just call it useful information that could push more support for getting involved in this conflict right and i don't know if everyone remembers this but at the beginning of this conflict a large portion of this country the united states right a large portion of the country um especially um you know generally more in one political ideology than another was very supportive of getting just directly involved like people were literally like yeah let's just go do this right because they were very concerned about what was happening I don't think we have that same level of support any longer because of how long this has dragged on. But you can see why these things would be useful to try to get those people riled up once again, okay? All right, so just checking back in the chat. Um, Luke B, low-key, Magic Pepper, low-key dogging on the dagger in the last upload, and I'm here for it. <laughs> no, you know, and here's what I'll say. Not d digging on the dagger because I don't have any reason to as of yet. Uh, everyone else has their own reviews and their own opinions, but I will be formulating my own opinion through using it myself. And I will let everyone know exactly how it goes. But I do seriously want to know if there are some good options out there that can live in that you know environment of compatibility with others and at the same time come in at a budget-friendly price point, especially when... I was able to pick, you know, one of mine up for the total of 260 bucks when it came to working with deals and piecemealing things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's actually going to go well. Team America World Police, 124 grain 9mm Federal HST or 124 grain Spear Gold Dot, which is the best one? <laughs> you know what? I don't know the answer to that because that's a really tough question. They're both high quality, both good to go. Honestly, I would use either one without second thought, no problem at all, all right? But if I did have to pick one, like if I had two boxes in my hands and I was, I was forced to pick one, Man, um, you know, I, I might go HST just because in my experience with using other calibers as well, they've generally been more reliable, even in 1911 platforms and things that usually don't enjoy hollow points as much. So just my experience. Moving on from there, okay? We have all these leaked documents. We have this information. There's a lot of other stuff to talk about, but we have other hot zones to get to as well. Now here is, you know, there... Some of this was leaked on Twitter, and just to kind of give you a, an inside view as to like why some people are questioning the validity of this is that we had two different documents that showed up, and they were copies of each other, but with different information, right? So now the misinformation has already begun, and then because the information was changed, and it was kind of clearly changed, like a bad Photoshop job, which also makes you wonder how valid it was in the sense of, oh, this is Russia trying to cook the books, right? Like, look, if you're a professional disinformation campaign whatever you are expert i guess or whatever you want to call it right you're going to know how to use photoshop to a degree that doesn't make it super obvious that it's not correct right but if you look at some of these documents you'll see that the faked ones that they're concerned about are very obviously edited like to the point where like like i use photoshop to make thumbnails on youtube and i could have done a better job so it just really makes you question all of it it really does but either way Basically, what we're seeing is that the amount of casualties on both sides might be not necessarily what's being reported to the American public and to people in the Western Hemisphere. Um, and it could go either way, but regardless, it looks like the numbers are just not accurate from what we've been being told, uh, regardless of which side you're looking at. So keep that in mind, uh, but it is something to consider. And yes, this information can be found on Twitter. There's a lot of things here. Now, one thing that um, that I thought was interesting is I was looking at a lot of different articles and a lot of different sources to try to get some of this information was that, Okie okay, Khan, good to see you. Glad you're here. We got salt and pepper one pretzel crust pizza is amazing. And I totally agree with you. Um, so one thing I wanted to bring up that I, I thought was interesting is that throughout the research and, and some of the stuff I was doing to kind of prepare for this live stream and to get some of this info out to you all in a way that was reasonable, you know, because there's a lot of it out there. I can't spend five hours doing this on a live stream. But what I want to say is that um, it does appear that there is this kind of, of a concept that maybe we should at least consider, okay? Um, underestimation of Russia has been 
pretty rampant since the beginning of the conflict. And the fact that Russia isn't just steamrolling Ukraine, regardless of the amount of billions of dollars of equipment and financial aid and everything else that has been sent to Ukraine via NATO and the EU and, and the Western Hemisphere in general, right? Regardless of all that, we're still looking at it like, wow, look how incompetent Russia is and underestimating their capabilities because they haven't steamrolled Ukraine, which is kind of a common misconception, I would say, because I think it's dangerous to underestimate your enemy, even if it's true, right? So even if they are actually struggling to that degree, underestimating your enemy is like rule number one from the art of war not to do, right? But here we are constantly being told that by mainstream media, by our own government, and everyone else that... Um, has a bias in this conflict, um, which it's okay to have a bias in this conflict. Look, I'm not a fan of anyone being an invading aggressor regardless of the situation, but we have to be realistic and logical about things that are happening around us and understand that underestimating a superpower, a nuclear superpower like Russia, is a dumb idea, and it's constant. And then another misconception uh, that I think we should at least consider here is that Everyone has this idea that Russia is literally trying to like take over Ukraine in the sense of uh, of literally absorbing it in the sense of more land, right? Like at the end of this conflict, Russia wants to be able to have that borderline drawn further across the rest of Ukraine to show a bigger Russia at the end of this whole situation, right? And maybe that's a misconception because there's also the possibility that Russia is using this conflict as a way to weaken Ukraine's and NATO's ability to wage war, right? It's it's a way to weaken their ability to fight them off further down the road, or who knows what else. But it is true that this very much looks like attrition warfare, and it very easily could not have been, especially if the higher-end equipment and capabilities and larger amounts of troops were being used, but they currently don't seem to be being used to that degree. So you have to understand that there's more to this puzzle than just the most basic understanding of it. And I think those misconceptions of believing that A, Russia is incapable of doing what it is they're trying to accomplish, you know, that underestimation is a bad idea. And then B, the fact that we think that they want to take over Ukraine in the sense of having more territory rather than destroying their ability to wage war and destroying NATO's ability to wage war in the process. I mean, look how everyone's doing economically. Even when it comes to the United States, countries like France, Germany, the EU in general, I mean, economically everyone's struggling and it very much seems like it's going to be much more difficult to wage a war, especially on multiple fronts at this point in time than it would have been prior to this conflict, right? So these are considerations and thoughts you need to consider when you're digesting this information. I'm not telling you how to think. I'm trying to give you things to think about. I hope that helps clear that up, all right? Now, um, Luke B., that's one of the few downs downsides to living in the country. No, no pizza delivery here. I have to drive to town. Totally get that. Weirdly enough, I guess I live close enough to a town now where I can get some pizza delivered to my door, and I, I know they hate when I call because they hate coming as far out as they have to to get here, but they're willing to do it, so... I don't know, man, but hey, thanks pizza guy. Anyway, <laughs> now let's go ahead and keep moving in that regard because now that I give you some things to think about, here's something else to consider that I haven't really seen talked about very much. And I think that this is very important for us to keep in mind throughout this entire conflict here on out. You know how AI is publicly accessible at this point when it comes to like chat GPT and when it comes to AI generated art and everything else that's been going on in the online community, right? Well, Ukraine inform or UKR inform, however you're supposed to say it, right? Well, they are talking about AI and disinformation, opportunities and risks amid war, right? Now, this was put out April 6th, 2023, not June 4th. Don't let them fool you with their European style of dating, okay? But here's something I want you to actually consider. AI can be very problematic, and AI is also going to be used as a solution to conflicts in the future and ai is already integrated into a lot of our equipment as well as our enemies equipment when it comes to the way the modern technological battlefield is starting to be shaped right so keep this in mind how artificial intelligence helps in working with information 
AI has great potential for creating and processing content. The Center for Strategic Communication and Information Security employs AI capabilities to monitor media space and analyze an array of online publications. This is about automated tools, including Semantic Force and Attack Index platforms. Semantic Force helps users identify information trends, track changes in user response on social media to news and events, identify hate speech, etc. Another vector of the neural network application is detailed Im image analysis, which allows for the rapid detection of inappropriate or line content <clears throat> I'll, I'll keep going on here okay attack index uses machine learning cluster analysis computer linguistics gosh where are these parentheses going to end formation clustering and visualization of semantic networks and correlation of wavelet analysis to detect ongoing psyops i guess they had to like parenthesize the end just to give you another parenthesized uh, statement there the available tools allow distinguishing between organic and coordinated content distribution detect automated spam distribution systems assess the impact of the audience of certain social media user accounts tell bots from real users and much more all using ai okay these tools can be used to both detect disinformation analyze misinformation campaigns and develop countermeasures oh countermeasures you say how would you countermeasure disinformation using ai i have no idea AI, potential to create and spread disinformation. Almost every day, neural networks demonstrate the improvement of their capabilities in creating graphic, textual, and audiovisual content. Its quality will improve considering the capabilities of machine learning. Today, popular neural networks are used by internet users more like a toy than a tool for creating fakes. However, there are already examples of how the images generated by neural networks not only became viral, but also were perceived by users as real. In particular, the image of a boy who survived a missile strike in Dnipro, or Putin greeting Xi Jinping on his knees. These examples clearly demonstrate that the images designed with the help of neural networks already compete with the real ones in terms of their emotional charge, and this will certainly be used for the purpose of disinformation. A study by the NewsGuard Analytical Center conducted in January 2023 found that ChatGPT is able to generate texts that develop the already existing conspiracy theories and include real events in their context. The tool has a potential for automated distribution of multiple messages, the topic and tone of which will be determined by a human operator, but their text will be generated by AI. Already today, with the help of this bot, disinformation messages can be created, including those based on the narratives of Kremlin propaganda, by formulating appropriate requests. Countering the spread of artificially generated fake content is a challenge that we already have to be prepared to respond to. Now, no need to go further into that. I think everyone here understands where I was going with that information, right? But you guys understand that we're in an age and an era where AI can literally create information and then spread it itself or as you might want to say leak it right so if ai can leak this information and it can create it and it can create it visually contextually it can create audio it can create video it can create text it can create everything i would ascertain it could create the documents we're seeing leaked right now if it wanted to i'm not saying that's what happened but i'm just trying to get you to understand that ai is 100% being used right now in this current conflict. And it's being used right now in general across the entire internet space. So because of that, you have to understand that not only could AI be creating disinformation, not only could AI be dispersing it, but AI could also be obtaining real information and then leaking it. AI can do a lot of things that we probably aren't aware of. And in fact, AI can probably do more than the people who invented it are even aware of. And with the learning machine algorithms that they use to increase AI capability, how long is it until AI just starts plucking documents from whatever and then putting them out there for whatever reason, right? So I didn't really see much connecting of the dots when it came to that, but the fact that that article came out on April 6th, right? And we're talking about these leaked documents now and that article was from Ukraine and how Ukraine is trying to regulate and strategize use of AI throughout this war um, should tell you a lot, right? And let's be honest, because part of being prepared, part of being strategic when it comes to your thought process as to what's the actual threats we need to worry about here in the world right now means being honest and logical, right? So we're going to be honest and we're going to be logical. Who most likely benefits the most from this information, right? 
you would say, oh, it's Russia, because they know now that there was a spring counteroffensive that everyone was trying to gear up for. They know what our supply lines are. They know how many supplies are anticipated to be delivered. They know uh, what Ukraine is doing in the sense of lacking capability and how quickly they're going to run out of munitions and everything else, right? Uh, and then other people could say, you know, well, it's the United States because, uh, you know, this gives us reasons to like, you know, move forward and to demolish Russia's cyber hacking capabilities and everything else because we now know that they're attacking us from inside or who knows what, right? But in reality, the people who benefit the most from this information being leaked is going to be Ukraine because what it would appear to me is that regardless of the validity of it, it could be 100% accurate, right? But now there's an 100% accurate list of documents that basically says Ukraine needs more help or else they're going to lose. And then how do people react to that, right? So just keep it in mind that AI from this moment on for the rest of our lives until, I mean, unless like we hit the reset button, which I don't want to have happen. I hope everyone understands that. Please separate the concept of preparedness from any type of, you know, nihilism. Like I don't want anything to fall apart or crash and burn i literally don't i want to just be chill and enjoy my life i want to go back to talking about so what if zombies actually attack here's what you need a crowbar with a tennis racket grip on it <laughs> which is legit i actually really like that concept don't get me wrong and that is just specifically for making sure my hands don't get tired when i'm doing construction type things no other reason but what i want to say is that those were the good times when we could just hypothetically talk about things that could happen like even big natural disaster events like Yellowstone or the Cascadia subduction zone or everything else, right? But now we're talking about like this is happening literally in real time and we have to react to it and possibly witness something terrible here in our, in our near future, right? So understand that we have to approach all of this with logic and reason and honesty so that we can be as prepared for it as possible. We also have to keep in mind like who benefits the most from these situations. And right now, Knowing that Ukraine will like basically lose if they don't get what they need by May 23rd, man, what a, what a way to create some urgency, get a cutoff date, everything else related to that, and then um, see what the West will do or NATO or who knows. I mean, now that Finland's in NATO, right? Like you know they they got neighbors, you know you got you got people sharing borders with Russia. You can just pop on over, no problem at all. So um, just keep all this in mind. But anyway, from here on out, AI is involved, regardless. And man, those deep fakes and everything else that AI is capable of doing, they're going to be impossible to tell a difference from eventually. And that's scary because then you literally can't believe anything. All right. Now, South Florida DCL, good evening to you as well. Okay. Oki Khan says port workers are on strike. Uh, let's see. We have chat GPT bot here in the chat saying 100. <laughs> well, thanks for being here and letting me know that you'll always be here. From here on out. <laughs> all right. Now, what else is going on? Well, you know all that stuff we talked about here recently with, like, you know, China being involved with, like, uh, Latin America. And you know that Russia was also involved with Latin America, right? Well, in these leaked documents, it seems that there would be more proof of that just to give you some more things to consider. Pentagon leaked docs show Russia and China's reach in Latin America and the Caribbean, okay? And this is just to kind of remind you that it's, it's not as far away as people like to think okay and of course when you include the arctic circle and alaska it's not very far away at all but regardless this is something else to keep in mind a recent leak of u.s classified intelligence reports appears to confirm what many latin american and caribbean watchers have warned about in recent years russia and china are trying to gain a foothold amid wanting u.s leadership i don't know what they're talking about when it comes to wanting u.s leadership it everything's fine what are you <laughs> what are you talking about about. Screenshots of some of those documents obtained by the Miami Herald showed that Russian mercenaries were planning to pitch a plan to provide security in Haiti after months of unsuccessful negotiations led by the United States to form a multinational force to help tackle escalating armed gang violence in the Caribbean nation. And look, I know that it's not the United States's job to like police everyone and to get involved with everything, but if a power vacuum exists and you don't fill it, you have to expect it to be filled by someone else. So this is something that is happening and, and being pitched, right? Okay. They also reveal that the Russian government was trying to use Brazil's offer to mediate in the war the Kremlin launched against Ukraine to its advantage. Also, according to the highly classified documents, China is benefiting from the Russian-Ukraine war in countries like Nicaragua, where Moscow is a key security partner. Okay. Understand, there is this connection and that the South America... And our southern border are a security threat at this point in time. If you don't believe that, then you're not paying attention. 
Okay, I don't know what else to say about that. It's just true. Uh, and, the, and this is just going to keep going. And like, Haiti's very, very close. It, the Cuban Missile Crisis was a big deal because of how close Cuba is to Florida. I believe it's 90 miles, right? Haiti's not much further away. So, do you want another Cuban mi Missile Crisis? I don't, but this is what we're allowing, apparently, okay? All right, so... Uh, I do want to say, Laura L., thanks for joining the membership. I really appreciate it. Any support this channel gets is greatly appreciated. And at, at some ways, to me, still surprising. Because, like, I'm just doing the best I can here to try to get people prepared, share information, have conversations, give you ideas the best I can. And uh, all the support is very well appreciated. Prepper Now, thank you for being here and modding. I really appreciate that as well. Uh, three Dogs and a Paw, thank you so much for the super chat. And it is going well. So thank you for that. Um, now... Well, uh, and that's, you know, no, not Satch. She says, Haiti, like Ukraine, is none of our business. Look, I understand that. But I also just want to be realistic about the fact that, okay, we leave Haiti alone, which probably is the best thing to do at this point in time. But then someone else wants to go get involved. So you see how it's, it's, a, it's a compromise no matter which way you look at it, okay? Now, uh, let's go ahead and talk about... Um, <sighs> other leaks that have happened before actually these aren't leaks that are happening right now they're leaks from before okay and just because we're already you know having this discussion about how much i appreciate all the support here on the channel i'll go ahead and mention that the channel's biggest supporter is midway usa which has been phenomenal in the sense of allowing me to do a lot more when it comes to preparedness and sharing ideas about equipment and gear and stuff like that which i'll just be 100 percent honest with everybody here i wouldn't otherwise have access to because i'm not a wealthy individual I do okay for myself because I've worked very hard for a large portion of my life to try to get to the point where I'm at now. However, um, I'm still not rich, so I'm not going to pretend like I am. But I will say that Midway USA makes it possible for me to do a lot of things that I couldn't otherwise do. So a big thank you to them. And the fact that they're cool with supporting someone like me, Magic Prepper, and being affiliated with me in the sense of being a brand ambassador, it says a lot because it shows that you know preparedness and being in the prepper community is becoming you know more and more mainstream and supported by these these companies that uh also support things like the second amendment which i don't know why i would support that or be concerned about that but don't worry about it anyway moving forward <clears throat> randall pickard have you heard the leak that we support you i appreciate that thank you for that i i i think it's the best leak i've heard today but here's one to remind you about something that happened in february uh <laughs> Trudeau claims there are inaccuracies in the leaked documents about Chinese interference, okay? So this isn't just happening to the U.S. This happens to all these other countries as well, and it's constantly showing our inadequacies, okay? And especially our neighbors to the north. I love the Canadians who support this channel, who are here in the chat, the Canadians who try to be prepared and do what they can. But man, I hope you guys are able to convince the larger part of your population to change their mind about the way things are going because this guy is a clown that's i'm just gonna say it okay i'm sorry but it's true and the, the stuff that comes out of this guy's mouth just like blows my mind sometimes and i can say that because i try not to get political here on the channel of course i'm always going to sway one way or the other based on the fact that there are certain groups of people here in the united states that would like to eliminate my ability to be as prepared as i would like to be but that being said since i'm not in canada i can go ahead and say just from an outside perspective this guy seems to be clownish in nature so prime minister justin trudeau claims there are many inaccuracies in the leaked documents from canada's national intelligence agency in recent days about china's attempts to influence a 2021 federal election but didn't specify what exactly was inaccurate. Well, it's hard to say when something's inaccurate when it's not. But <laughs> just go ahead and keep going. Trudeau made those comments during a press conference Thursday in Halifax to highlight his government's efforts in signing healthcare deals with the provinces. But reporters raised again the issue of Chinese interference and those leaks presumably coming from CSIS. We are, of course, always concerned about national security. We're always concerned about ensuring that people can have confidence that our intelligence agencies in particular are able to do their job and keep their secrets and function as a responsible agency, he said. Listen. We know there has been quite a bit of collaboration between Canada and China over the years. It's just the truth, you know? And of course, the United States too. Man, we have people in Congress right now who have literally been found to either accept money from certain Chinese-related agencies or literally involve personally with spies from China, right? I know of two, a senator and a congressman who both had very personal relationships with Chinese spies. So, you know what? 
can't can't say anything about this thing going on in Canada without saying what's happening here as well. But this is a reminder that China is also influencing and trying to get their hands on everything as well. And there are documents leaking regarding that. And why would these documents need to be leaked, right? Why, if China was trying to interfere in the election, why would why wouldn't these documents just be made public, right? Why wouldn't everyone just be aware of it? That would be national news. You'd want everyone to know that China's trying to influence our election. Just like the United States wanted everyone to know that Russia was trying to influence our election. However, in Canada, apparently they didn't want them to know that this was happening. And then everyone found out. And then they had to say, we're not sure how accurate that is. And just so you know, there's a lot of evidence that it's probably relatively accurate. But it's a reminder that China is still part of the deal. And now what else is China doing? Well, they're trying to remove some of our support from countries that we used to not have to worry too much about i'm gonna give you some ideas here hot zone china we're talking about it now so this is the second hot zone of the night okay so um montana mama if your your mom thinks trudeau is great i get it okay listen here's something i want to i want to mention and i'm just going to say this because it's the best way for me to say it and i think everybody here should be aware of that but one of the issues we're having, and this is just my opinion, you know, I may, might make people people a little upset, but it's just the truth, right? And, uh, and you know, use your own personal experience for an example of this if you'd like. But our past generation is a little out of touch with the way things are these days. If you haven't noticed by, I don't know, some of the people in Congress, the way they were interrogating the CEO of TikTok, uh, the way they approached some of our modern issues... And don't even understand what a text message is. Our previous generation is very out of touch. And they have these beliefs and they hold these beliefs in a system that those of us from a, a slightly younger generation um, are very aware is no longer working in our favor. But, you know, if you go back to the generation before, there's a lot of faith and hope in a system because that's how they were raised to, to, to operate. They believe full-heartedly that the government always has their interest uh, in mind always has their best interest in mind and that nobody would lie to them and that the media doesn't lie to them and that you know the, that everyone else is just a crazy conspiracy person the difference is that we grew up with the internet and the internet taught us a lot of things that we weren't aware of before and we also had the ability to communicate with millions of people from different areas backgrounds and regions where we are able to actually figure out that wait a second we've been lied to so unfortunately it's hard to change the minds of an entire generation and it's hard to inform them about newer things like technology some people in that generation totally get it not going to say they don't but there's a large majority that are just still under that impression and it was very well demonstrated anytime our congress approaches anything related to technology they literally have no idea what they're talking about they don't understand it and those same people are in the same genre as everybody else who's just gung-ho like i like him and the media says i should and that's what i trust because it's always been a trustful source of information my entire life it's unfortunate but it's true not trying to be rude just trying to be realistic right and, and i think that's something that we we're losing as a society in many ways and i think it's something that we as preppers have to avoid but if you can't be like honest or or logical about a situation then you are doing yourself a disservice especially in the sense of preparedness so it is what it is now all right and, and honestly it goes into why we need term limits because i mean Mitch McConnell is too old to be, you know, a senator anymore. I'm sorry. You're way out of touch. You've been rich and powerful for way too long, right? Joe Biden can't even talk full sentences. Like, this is getting out of control, right? We need people who understand what's happening to us now. People who are literally experiencing the American dream now. Like, hey, I'm working a job or running a business or working for a company and I pay a mortgage and I have kids in school, right? Why would these people care about what's happening in our schools if they are 40 years removed from having their children in a school, right? Sorry, no more ranting. Back to what we're talking about. Hot zone number two, China. All right. Francis Macron urges Europe to reduce dependency on the U.S. Stay away from Taiwan conflict. Okay. This is a classic example of a begging. That's how I'm looking at it. Here's what's here's what's happening. I'll tell you what's happening, okay? And this is just my opinion, but like this is how I receive this information, okay? Let, let me just give you the 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 official statement really quick here first, okay? 
French President Emmanuel Macron asserted that Europe must reduce its dependency on the United States and avoid getting involved in the China-Taiwan conflict. The remarks from the French president came during his flight back from China, Politico reported. Earlier this month, Macron was on a three-day visit to China where he met the Chinese President Xi Jinping. From the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war to the France-China bilateral ties, blala, bilateral ties, <laughs> oh man, that was a good one. The two world leaders held talks on wide-ranging issues. During his interview with Politico on his way back, the French president stated that the great risk Europe is facing is getting caught up in a crisis that doesn't involve Europe in the first place. But wait a second. It does involve Europe. You know how it involves Europe? They rely on cheap Chinese manufacturing just as much as anyone else, right? And these guys are already dealing with failing economies, a failing war machine. They are worried about their status in the sense of being attacked from all sides because let's be honest all of europe is much more concerned about russia than the united states because we're further away so to us it doesn't feel as imperative to figure out what to do about that situation but if you're in europe and you know you have nuclear weapons moving to the border of belarus and you're right there it's concerning or more concerning than maybe it would be for us right so these countries and these leaders who are losing power, especially Macron, who literally has his entire population in riots burning down Paris on a regular basis, right? And that's not, oh, it's just this one weekend or whatever. No, it's like every every month there's another reason why Paris is burning because of this guy's decisions, right? But here's the thing to keep in mind, okay? This situation, China literally only has to say one thing. We'll just stop shipping to you. We're not going to export to you anymore. So what are you going to do? You want to stick with the United States, right? Because they have military power and they protect you? Or do you want to continually provide your citizens with affordable goods? Which one is it? Oh, is your economy already tumbling? Oh, are people already rioting in the streets because of what you're trying to figure out economically to do with your current situation? So what are you going to do? Are you going to stick with the U.S.? And make sure that they can defend you in a World War III scenario? Or are you going to stick with China and make sure that your people still have affordable goods so they don't fully pull another French Revolution on you, right? So, and it, I mean, that's, that's pretty basic. It is. And what is the U.S. going to do to supplant China in that situation? Nothing. We literally could not provide France with enough cheap, affordable goods to supplant China. We can't. We just, we just literally can't. We can't even do it for ourselves, let alone another country. So what are they going to do? Especially when you have someone in leadership who's probably already comfortable with the idea of buddying up with China, right? Especially uh, ideologically. So you're going to see more of this, in my opinion, because people are already struggling. Economies are already dropping off the face of the earth in many ways. Uh, this conflict isn't getting any better. And these countries are scared and the people in power are very scared about losing that power. So what do you think they're going to do decision-wise? And, and sometimes you do have to boil these things down to super basic analogies because it's it, it, you can get really in-depth about every connection and inner working issue that these countries have with each other, or you can just admit the basic, bare minimum, obvious truth. China will give us cheap goods. The U.S. protects us militarily. Which one, do we prov which one do we care about more right now, right? And if you're in a failing economy with half your population rioting every weekend, right? I know it's not that many people, but it's a lot of people in France. One thing I'll give Fr the French is that, like, they, they, they get to it. <laughs> they get to it. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean you have to agree with their, their methods, but they do get to it. So, uh, just saying, I think Macron is, is choosing the... The, the decision that he thinks will benefit him and the people who vote for him the most, which is cheap Chinese manufacturing over American military defense. Because what are we really doing to defend them? Yeah, I just smacked a couple of USB cables, so let's see if that actually uh, ruined everything or not. It's possible. I ruin things sometimes. Now, let's see here. Another thing to keep in mind is what's happening in Taiwan and why this hot zone number two, good old China, is where World War III is, uh, at least the way it looks, even with the fact that Russia and Ukraine are in a hot conflict right this second, this China thing might be where World War III actually starts, everybody. I'm just letting you know that, because there's more at stake. There really is, when it comes to the United States, right? I'm not saying there's not more at stake for Ukraine or for Eastern Europe, but for us, there's more at stake when it comes to China and 
specifically Taiwan, based on manufacturing capabilities, okay? China simulates strike in Taiwan on second day of drills, okay? This is from April 9th. We're now on the third day of drills. We'll talk about that here in just a second, okay? China's military simulated precision strikes against Taiwan in a second day of drills around the island on Sunday, with the island's defense ministry reporting multiple Air Force sorties and that it was monitoring China's missile forces. China, which claims democratically governed Taiwan as its own territory, began three days of military exercises around the island on Saturday, the day after Taiwan President Tsai Ling... Tsai Ing? Yeah, I probably screwed that up. Tsai Ing Wen returned from a brief visit to the United States and, of course, met with Kevin McCarthy, which we were told would have consequences, right? Chinese state television reported that the combat readiness patrols and drills around Taiwan were continuing. Under the Unified Command of Theater Joint Operations Command Center, multiple types of units carried out simulated joint precision strikes on key targets on Taiwan Island and the surrounding sea areas and continue to maintain an offensive posture around the island, it said. The Chinese military's Eastern Theater Command put out a short animation of the simulated attacks on its WeChat account, showing missiles fired from land, sea, and air into Taiwan with two of them exploding in flames as they hit their targets, okay? They're not, this is not, you know, child's play. This is all really happening, okay? And we have said multiple times that we will defend Taiwan from China, okay? China-Taiwan aircraft carrier seals off island on third day of drills. An embargo is becoming increasingly more likely, which is a very difficult scenario. So Taiwan gets embargoed. How does that affect trade with China? Our, I'm telling you right now, our politicians and our government is at the behoof, the, the behest of China, okay, behoof, I'm just going to say words now that don't exist, because I'm doing it anyway, we literally need their stuff, or else America is going to riot, right, the people, the people in this community, and the people in, in certain communities, um, here on, on, on this platform, and online, and, and, and of course, in smaller communities in general, um, the people who want manufacturing to return to America and are willing to spend extra money on American-made products are a very small minority of people. I hope you understand that. Like, we, we're we never going to go back to that, most likely. There is a giant majority of people here in this country that would gladly accept Chinese leadership and blue helmets all over the place if it meant they could still get their cheap iPhone, if it meant they could still get their cheap stuff, right? If it meant they could still live comfortable without trying too hard. That's the majority. They don't care. They don't. So don't be fooled that our politicians know that and that they would not be willing to make that transition either without there being some kind of catastrophic necessity in order to do so. But even then, I would be concerned about whether or not they would actually go through with whatever it is they would do defensively. Okay, so let's see here. Um, Seeker, I'm not going to comment on that corn dog thing, but like, that's hilarious because we eat a lot of corn dogs around here, okay? <laughs> Jordan Bay, been in IT over 20 years and the cloud is a very real threat. Companies taking their on-prem data centers and giving security control over to AWS, Azure, GCP, .gov, .gov cloud structures are also a concern. Yeah, I agree. So running on-premise data servers is expensive, right? Of course, requires routine maintenance, requires the equipment itself, requires a lot of power consumption, everything else related to it. So yeah, most companies have just moved to storing everything on the cloud. The cloud is not secure. It just isn't. So I agree with you, Dombe, and I appreciate your insight being within the industry. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and thank you for telling everybody because I think a lot of people like underestimate just how much of a security uh, crisis we could find ourselves in when it comes to our, our internet and our infrastructure that is well connected throughout, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, Prepper now wanted to mention that Russia is doing Arctic maneuvers this week, so something else to consider. Uh, and then we also have, let's see, uh, Six Gun Miller. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Now, okay. China aircraft carrier seals off island on third day of drills. China has finished three days of military drills around Taiwan, which included sealing off the island and simulating targeting strikes. Taiwan said it had detected jets to its east while China said its Shandong aircraft carrier had taken part. Beijing began the exercises on Saturday after Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen met the U.S. House Speaker in California. After the drills ended, Taiwan's defense ministry said it would not stop strengthening its combat preparedness, okay? This is getting to the point where things can spiral out of control very quickly. How quickly, you add? Well, let's see here. How quickly? Let's see what Taiwan thinks. Because they have a, a say in this too, apparently, right? Because 
Don't forget, Taiwan considers himself a sovereign nation. That's how we look at them as well. Well, that means they can also just act if they want, right? Taiwan warns Chinese misstep could lead to uncontrollable World War outbreak. Wow, that would be just the worst thing ever. Taiwan warned of a war on a great scale if the Chinese military continues to increase tensions. They're not warning on it in the sense of if China actually attacks us. They're not warning about it if China actually shoots something, right? They're talking about if they continue to increase their tensions. That's all. So who knows what that could even look like, right? Taiwan is sounding alarms over Chinese military drills that says it could ma mistakenly spark an uncontrollable war that would draw in countries from around the world. The Chinese military exercises this couple of days have been very serious, Taiwanese Foreign Minister Joseph Wu told Fox News Sunday. If you look at the sorties of the Chinese Air Force together with the ships, they're coming very close to Taiwan, and any accident might spark an uncontrollable war in between China and Taiwan. And if other countries are trying to intervene, it might be the start of a war of a great scale. Right? The comments come as a large-scale Chinese military drills under the third day. Yada, yada, yada. We talked about that. But this is legitimately true. This could easily, uncontrollably spiral into a great war of a huge scale. All due to an accident. But the same exact thing can be said about Russia, Ukraine. Okay? Like, we're, we're just waiting to see where this really starts. All three hot zones discussed tonight have the capability and the possibility of starting world war three and we're getting closer and closer to it the longer these things go on so don't for a second assume we're not going to see it because we have three very volatile places that we have to keep an eye on right now that could literally develop this world war three scenario overnight from one mistake any of them okay now the u.s is also saying we're here we're in the area don't forget okay U.S. warship sails near man-made Chinese-controlled isle. April 10th. Okay, this is all happening, like, right now. This is real time, okay? Beijing, April 10th. A U.S. Navy destroyer, destroyer sailed near one of the most important man-made and Chinese-controlled islands in the South China Sea on Monday in a freedom of navigation mission that Beijing denounced as illegal. Okay? While the United States frequently makes such voyages to challenge China and other states' territorial claims in the strategic waterway, the latest one took place as Beijing staged more war games around Taiwan. The U.S. Navy 7th Fleet said the USS Milius engaged in normal operations within 12 nautical miles of mischief reef in the spratly islands once a reef submerged at high tide and where china has built an airport and other facilities under customary international law features like mischief reef that are submerged at high tide in their naturally formed state are not entitled to a territorial sea the seventh fleet said in a statement okay the land reclamation efforts installations and structures built on mischief reef do not change this characterization under international law now imagine if the u.s built an island in the middle of the atlantic ocean and then Russia or China sailed a ship within 12 nautical miles of it. We'd be hearing all about it. Imagine if they sailed within 12 nautical miles of Manhattan, right? It doesn't matter what we think about it. What matters is what they think about it. And if China says, this is our island and you're within 12 miles, what is this about? Expect something to happen at some point if these things continue to occur, okay? We're, we're pushing the limit as well. We're not... We're not innocent when it comes to these escalations like we're very much part of the escalation process at this point in time okay so florida sheepdog um <laughs> they just need to send their o lights to taiwan yeah china could do that you know send them all the o lights and then see what happens right now listen i'm just gonna say this because i'm you know i'm, I'm gonna try my best to be reasonable here i've owned o lights in the past i didn't have any issues with my o lights but i have heard of o lights not maintaining their original form due to expansion of heat right so i get it and i and i think it's funny but i will say i have used o lights that have not done that too so throwing that out there i don't run o lights anymore due to the fact that i have decided based on price point that streamlight makes a superior product within the same exact budget tier so i prefer them if i'm going to use a chinese made light source of some kind on a weapon uh but in general i also am moving towards th things like arisaka uh and surefire of course so it is what it is all right team america i don't get it these live streams are really good and well put together why don't you have 1 million subscribers like canadian prepper you are a really talented brother well you know what let's just say i just don't have enough time 
okay? Uh, if I had more time in the sense of being on this platform, who knows? But I think he was on the platform for four or five years before I was even. Like, so it, so it was just time. Let's just say that, all right? <laughs> um, you know, I know regardless of how everyone feels about Canadian Prepper, one thing I do want to say is that the fact that he has a million subscribers says a lot for the preparedness community. And it is good that we're getting more and more people involved with the idea of preparedness, regardless of how you feel about the information presented, right? So um, the more we can get, the more perspectives we can get, the more ideas we can get, the better things are. And then we'll see how that works in the sense of what people decide to support okay and any support i get here i appreciate very much so you know i'll keep doing what i can to keep things moving forward really well all right uh let's see here uh count chad the impaler says russian sneezes and fires the 100 megaton nuclear torpedo and sends a tsunami towards the east coast lol yeah i mean yeah and that stuff can happen like people people understand that there are procedures in place and ways for mistakes to not occur but don't, if, don't forget the ever-existent threat of rogue nations and rogue entities, okay? Um, and I'll always reference this because I think it's a good story. And it is, you know, Tom Clancy. So there's some relevant information in there in the sense of some research that was used to put together the concept. But the sum of all fears is the, a story about a rogue entity taking matters into their own hands and staging a nuclear attack and trying to frame Russia in, in doing so, right? And, and, and creating World War III in the process. So, like, that stuff is all still on the table, 100%. And unfortunately, it would be very hard not to look at Russia or China if there was some kind of an EMP or a nuclear detonation or anything along those lines. Um, but it could very well just be, like, a, a an organization, an extreme organization who decided they wanted to try to push things over that edge, right? So, I mean, even the show Jericho, right? Like, it turned out it was, like, a domestic uh, situation that put together the nuclear attack on the United States that brought everything down to, to you know, the Dark Ages again. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that could happen. And we have to be very aware that, you know, the, the first bit of news we get, if there ever is a situation like that, might not be exactly what happened. I don't know. So... Uh, Randall Pickard, do you consider the Mexican border to be part of the hot zone since there's been a dramatic increase, uh, of Chinese military age males crossing the border there? You know, um, the hot zone is, uh, yes, uh, I do. Um, and I, and I guess what I'm trying to say when we're talking about these hot zones, um, anything involved with China at this point in time, yes, can be considered part of that, right? Same with Russia, same with our next information uh discussion about hot zone number three so let's just go ahead and do this thing um now i do want to mention if you guys you know i've been getting a lot of great support tonight and i really do appreciate that um if you guys want to support the channel further uh you feel free to join the subscribe star i am trying my best to put out regular content over there we're just kind of having good conversations i'm willing to answer questions uh one of the subscribe star members there just today asked me some questions about optics and my experience and recommendations and stuff like that and then i you know i sent them all the information that i had on it and my thoughts and everything else and that's the stuff that i try to do over there where i don't really have the ability to constantly do that in, a, in on other platforms not to mention we're building a community there especially in the sense of if i suddenly disappear right so uh, i'll go ahead and put that in the live chat right now if you want to check it out it's five bucks a month but i'm trying my best to make it worth it there's a preparedness incentive every single month that i send out uh and this month it's going to be an ecoflow unit so uh, we're going to make sure it goes to somebody who needs it, right? And hopefully that person, you know, they, they paid their $5 monthly due, but they also got a $600 solar power station just by being part of the community. So, and it's not a giveaway. It is just a preparedness incentive. It's something I'm trying to do to give back to the members of that community because it's a lot harder to do things like that here on YouTube just due to the fact that there is a... I don't know, you guys get it, right? Like there's just a rampant amount of trolls and bots and everything else that's hard to compete with, not to mention the regulations and the rules and everything over there. So that's why we do stuff like that over on Subscribestar. So I'm just throwing that out there. Check it out if you would like. Now, um, Luis Martinez. Yes, I saw the video simulation of China versus Taiwan. It's very interesting and it's also very concerning because they're just putting it out there publicly to be like, yeah, all right, we're willing to do this, right? So U.S. deploys guided missile submarine amid, t amid tensions with Iran, Okay. The Middle East is a hot zone, but I'm going to go ahead and specifically say Israel, okay? And it's kind of a weird situation, right? But Israel is their own sovereign state. The United States clearly supports Israel very directly. Um, and Israel acts on their own volition when it comes to a lot of things they do. And Israel 
is very likely to create a World War III scenario just as much as China or Russia at this point in time. And I'm not saying Iran specifically, I'm saying Israel. And the reason I'm saying Israel is because they're involved in multiple different uh, offensive, offensive maneuvers and different situations involving kinetic warfare on a regular basis with multiple different entities so i can't just pin down iran right because israel is in conflict with lots of different people all at the same time on a regular basis so we're gonna go ahead and just say israel is the third hot zone okay so first and foremost u.s deploys guided missile submarine amid tensions with iran united arab enemies dubai okay Emirates, not the Emirates. They are they're they're different. It's the Emirates front is a completely different thing than the United Arab Emirates. Okay, the U.S. Navy has deployed a guided missile submarine capable of carrying up to 154 Tomahawk missiles to the Middle East. A spokesman said Saturday in what appeared to be a show of force toward Iran following recent tensions. The Navy rarely acknowledges the location or deployment of submarines. Commander Timothy Hawkins, a, spoke, a spokesman for the 5th Fleet based in the Gulf nation of Bahrain, declined to comment on the submarine's mission or what had prompted the deployment. He said the nuclear-powered submarine, based out of Kings Bay, Georgia, passed through the Suez Canal on Friday and is capable of carrying up to 154 Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles and is deployed to U.S. 5th Fleet to help ensure regional maritime security and stability, Hawkins said. You want to look at this like a chessboard or possibly, I don't know, like playing Risk? The pieces are being strate strategically located for when this thing pops off in the main areas where it's likely to happen. Okay, you, we have to be able to see that at this point in time, right? Man. Anyway, he, the Fifth Fleet patrols the crucial Strait of Hormuz, the narrow mouth of the Persian Gulf through which 20% of all oil transits. Its region includes the Bab el Mandeb Strait off Yemen and the Red Sea stretching up the Suez Canal and the Egyptian waterway linking the Mideast to the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so this is a very strategic, a very important logistic shipping lane that also is in proximity to this third hot zone now what else is going on here well we have iran planning to attack israel according to israel Just keep that in mind there's always bias involved in these in these reports and articles but iran plans to attack israeli owned vessels to avenge advisors killed in syria new york times iran is preparing to attack israeli owned trading vessels to avenge two revolutionary guards advisors killed in alleged israeli airstrikes in syria last month the IRGC's aerospace force is gearing up to launch drone attacks on ships sailing through the Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea, according to the report, which cited two anonymous senior Western intelligence officials. Okay, this is from April 9th. So, understand, we put a nuclear submarine in the, in the same area that these concerns are starting to arise. You see the connections here, and you see how quickly this could spiral out of control. Okay, and then we talk about the submarine right here once again. All right. So, but Israel is out there doing their thing which, you know, is what they feel they have to do. But at the same time, like, this is why this is such a hot zone, okay? Israel strikes target Hamas in Lebanon and Gaza after rocket attacks. So they're also attacking entities that are outside of places like Iran, right? So we have Lebanon involved. We have the Gaza situation going on as well. These things are very spread out. There's a lot of things happening, a lot of fronts going on over there between many different nations, okay? More than 30 rockets were fired from Lebanon. Israel blames Hamas and Hezbollah. Rocket strikes follow Israeli raids on Al-Aqsa uh, Mosque. UN seeks de-escalation as Security Council meets. Israel's military hit sites in Lebanon and Gaza early on Friday in retaliation for rocket attacks and blamed on the Islamist group Hamas as tensions following police raids this week on the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem threatened to spiral out of control. You see how this is just going and going and going, right? And we know what Iran is up to. We know who they're working with. We know what they're trying to accomplish. We know what Israel's stance is on Iran in the sense of if they are able to acquire nuclear weapons or produce nuclear weapons, how Israel will react to that. And then we have a leaked Pentagon document. So we're back to the leaked documents once again, which is why we needed to reference all this tonight because... There's so much information being put out, and it all surrounds these three hot zones, these very specific hot zones, okay? Documents claim Israel's Mossad encouraged protests against Netanyahu, right? Oh, would an intelligence agency possibly ever try to create political unrest and upheaval? No, they wouldn't do that. Of course they would. Israel's Mossad intelligence agency was encouraging protests against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's regime. 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 
I'm just going to say words how I want tonight, apparently. In recent weeks, leaked U.S. intelligence claims. The leaked intelligence came in the form of a memo from U.S. Signals Intelligence. It alleged that Mossad advocated for Mossad officials and Israeli citizens to protest the new Israeli government's proposed judicial reforms, including several explicit calls to action that decried the Israeli government, according to Signals Intelligence. Netanyahu's office, which is in charge of Mossad, dismissed the claims in a statement to Fox News Digital. Okay, so... Here we have it. We have the government denying it as well. Once again, we have the intelligence agency Mossad themselves also denying it. But we can also see that this information has multiple different reasons for existing. One, it tells you that these agencies are part of the problem in the sense of creating unrest, right? Regardless of how you feel about what Israel was doing and what created those riots and protests, right? If intelligence agencies are the reason why they exist... We should always question that because it's not necessarily what we want for organic movements now, is it? And the other thing to consider is that if, if this is straight misinformation, well, it makes Israelis second guess their government and their intelligence agencies. It makes the protests seem less legitimate. It makes a lot of things look a certain way, you know, in which might benefit those who are in power there. So understand that. All three of these hot zones at any moment can create this World War III scenario. Israel goes after Iran, and Iran supplying Russia with drones. And Russia and China are working together to put a foothold in South America. I mean, it's all connected in one way or another. But I would expect World War III to start from one of these three places. And if after talking about all this information and these leaked documents and all the information coming out from them and everything else related to it... My thought process on it is that, at least right now, maybe most likely to occur from China, okay? And if it doesn't happen from China, it's because NATO wasn't ready for China. So they went ahead and just went after Russia. I mean, I don't know, you tell me, but that's the the gambles that are going to have to be made here very soon. Especially knowing Ukraine only has, you know, 30 days left. Right? So, this is all interesting information. These hotbeds do exist 100%. And now, something else to keep in mind when it comes to, I don't know, what's happening here in the United States, which I think is worth discussing, right? Um, is other leaked documents. <laughs> They're leaking everything now, right? Everything we talk about in this community, it's a problem, just so you know. Internet slang is a problem, okay? Apparently saying certain terminology now, like red-pilled or based, that's a problem, right? The FBI is literally going out of their way to target Americans who are not engaged in extremist activity, for the most part. Can you find someone who is that uses this terminology? Sure, 100% you can. Always you can. But you know what else? You can find someone else who's not. So, just keep it in mind. Our government and our Justice Department and our FBI and our military and every aspect of our government at this point in time is still extremely focused on what people like us are up to versus all this other crap we just discussed. I mean, it. when things aren't looking good, who, where do you point, right? So keep all that in mind, but you're targeted, I'm targeted, we're all targeted together. We're the problem apparently, even though this complete lack of leadership and mistakes made at every single level have brought us to the point of World War III, which we're basically in. I mean, we're in it. We're just not talking like we're in it, but I mean, we're in it, okay? Uh, but when it fully starts, when we, when the United States personally enters a hot conflict with one of these, in, in one of these hot zones then I guess we'll be able to say for sure we're in it. But as of right now, we're in it without technically being in it. So that's how we're discussing these things. And I'm sorry, but I'm not the problem. They really need to just get away from that idea. Get off me, bro. Like, I am not the problem here. You're not the problem here. Look around what's happening in the world. Look at the de-dollarization. People are getting rid of the U.S. dollar. The petrodollar is falling apart. We're losing alliances. France is choosing China over us at this point. 
because China can offer them more. I mean, everything is falling apart, but we're still concerned about like, hey, that magic prepper guy used the term based one time, so we really got to start looking into him, right? Like, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And then with the world becoming ever more dangerous and people becoming ever more threatened by what's happening outside of these borders and inside them as well, the go-to argument is that we need to disarm us, right? We need to be disarmed. There's no reason you need those things. Why would you need those things? I don't know. Do you see what's happening? It's ridiculous, okay? And you're supposed to blindly support what's happening in the sense of aid and equipment and everything else going to Ukraine and blindly look at the fact that everyday average Ukrainian citizens are having to arm up and defend themselves from what's happening and then go back to real life here in the United States and say, yeah, but we don't need to do that. We don't need that. We don't have to worry about that. Don't worry about that. Why would you worry about that? It's the United States. Nothing's going to happen, right? It's out of control. So just wanted to mention that. I appreciate all of you. I do. And I think we're going to wrap it up tonight. But here's the thing. Be prepared for this thing to like literally happen at any moment. And I know we've been saying that for quite some time now. But it, it, it's important to pay attention to just how close we're getting. Every day this all goes on for, we're closer to it. So I don't know what else to say. And these leaked documents, if there's validity to them, it's a problem. If they're completely fake, it's a problem. If AI created them and dispersed them, it's a problem. All we have is problems when it comes to this stuff, right? And are we going to focus on that only? Of course not. I'm going to move forward in my preparedness. I'm going to work on getting some more crops in the ground, right? I'm going to try to get some more plants that will feed me in the ground now that I'm able to. I'm going to work on getting livestock. I'm going to work on repairing things that need maintenance done to them. I'm going to work on the fact that I have ground squirrels somehow infiltrating my garage now not just digging holes in my property there's all kinds of stuff that i got to work on that i'm going to work on and i'm not going to let any of this information stop me from moving forward but i am going to keep it in mind that at any point in time it can boil over we can go over the edge and that our government is not as competent as everybody likes to think and don't forget it's in russia's best interest for us to underestimate them it's in china's best interest for us to think that they are using weaponized incompetence, right? And it's in our military's best interest for us to believe that they are fully under control and have no issue fighting multiple fronts at the same time. Like, I don't know, three of them, based on what we talked about tonight. And then, uh, and then you know, we're going to pretend like we can just do that now when we all know, like, one is going to be asking a lot at this point. So, it is what it is. Are we still the greatest nation on the on the planet? Yeah, in my opinion, we are. Is our military still the greatest military? Oh, yeah, definitely. But these alliances are, are getting stronger. And these countries are getting stronger. And we are highly underestimating China's ability to outpace everyone else on the planet when it comes to production. And that production isn't limited to five-cent toys you get out of a coin machine, right? Like, that production also applies to military hardware and equipment including nuclear weapons so keep all these things in mind we gotta do what we gotta do i appreciate every single one of you and i think that's gonna be it for magic prepper